This is being described as an AI second brain, and it is truly impressive. This might be the best chat with your documents project that I've seen so far. This is called Quiver, and you could set it up locally, and it accepts almost every type of document or media that you have. Pictures, video, PDFs, CSVs, PowerPoint documents. It works with almost all document types. And it runs locally. It's completely open source. You can use it with ChatGPT. You can use it with local models on your computer. It really does have everything. It's a bit hard to set up, but I'm gonna walk you through the setup step by step. Then we're gonna test it out. Let's go. All right, so this is the interface. I have it running locally. I can upload any files that I want. I've already uploaded one. So right now I've uploaded the constitution. And if I click view, I can find out more information about it. Then I click over to the chat tab and I can ask, what is this document about? The document you provided is the Constitution of the United States. So it has access to all of my documents. And essentially how you can think about Quiver is truly an AI second brain. You can throw any and all of your documents into it. And then you have a central place in which you can chat with any and all of your documents. They also have a fully hosted version if you don't wanna go through the work of setting it all up yourself at quiver.app and I'll link that in the description below. If I click on over to the Explore tab, you can see the documents that I've already uploaded. You can create different brains. So each brain is specific to a set of documents. So let's say you want to create one brain for your personal documents and another brain for your work documents, you could do that. And this is completely production ready. So you could have a server running with all of your personal documents, all of your work documents, ready to chat at any time. It is truly impressive. So if I click over to the settings tab, you can see that I have the different models right here. I can have GPT-4, I can have local models running. I can also have Anthropic running. You can set the temperature right here. You can set the number of tokens and you can create API keys so you can code on top of Quiver. I'm so glad I found this project. This is the GitHub repo for it about dump all your files into your private generative AI second brain and chat with it using LLMs, GPT-3.5, for private anthropic vertex AI and embeddings. All right, the setup was not straightforward, but I will show you how to do that after the demo. So here's the video demo for it. Let me show it to you. So here you just click and you can add any documents that you want. Here's the readme for Quiver. I click add. It adds it as embeddings. We're using Superbase for that. Then we start chatting with the documents. What is Quiver? And then using any large language model that it supports, it will tell you. And there it is chatting directly with that document. You can also select the models, select the temperature and select the number of tokens. I can see all of the files that I've uploaded right there. All right, so we're gonna need a few things to get this set up. Number one, you're gonna need Docker. If you don't already have Docker installed, go ahead and install it, it's free. Docker just containerizes this entire project and makes it super easy to spin up so you don't have to worry about dependencies. You're also gonna need Superbase, which is a free open source database that we're gonna use. Next, open up your terminal. The first thing we're gonna need to do is clone the repo. So to do that, let's come up to the top of the repo. Let's click this green code button. And then right here is the URL and we just click the copy button. Then let's switch back to our terminal and we're gonna type git clone. We're gonna paste that URL in there. Then we're gonna have and and cd quiver. So that's basically just two commands. We're gonna clone the repo and then we're gonna cd into it. And I'm on a Mac right now, but this should work just as easily on Windows. So then I click enter, it clones the repo and then switches into it. And you can tell we're in there because it says quiver right there. Next, we're gonna need Superbase. So go to superbase.com and sign up for a new account. It is free. Then we'll click dashboard and then we're gonna create a new project and I'll keep it under my org. The name is gonna be Quiver2 because I already had one going. We're gonna generate a password. We're gonna leave everything else the same and then create new project. Okay, now right here we have the API key, we have the URL and the JWT secret, all of which we're gonna need in a moment. Next, switch back to the GitHub repo. We're gonna need to grab this code right here which copies two of the example M files and creates the actual ones we'll be using. So I'm just gonna click copy, switch back to terminal. I'm gonna paste those two commands in there and then hit enter. Next, I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code and then in the top left, hit file, open folder, and then open the quiver folder that we just cloned. From there, click this backend dropdown and then the .m file is right here. And this is where we're gonna need to change some settings. First, we're gonna grab the Superbase URL. So head back to Superbase and right here is the project URL. Go ahead and click copy. 
switch back to the .m file, and then we're gonna place it right here. Next, we're gonna need the Superbase service key, and it starts with EY, and that can be found right here, API key. Now, I'm gonna rotate this API key before publishing this video. Copy, switch back to the .m file, we're gonna replace it right here. Next, we're gonna need the JWT secret key, and to find the JWT secret key, come back to Superbase, we're gonna go to Project Settings, and then API, and then that's right here. So we're gonna reveal it and copy it. Switch back to the .m file, and then we're gonna put it right there. Next, we need either an Anthropic API key or the OpenAI API key. You don't necessarily need those if you're gonna be using your own local model, but for today, I'm gonna to be using the OpenAI API key. So if you don't already have an OpenAI account, be sure to sign up and then grab your API key. And to do that, you go to platform.openai.com slash account slash API keys. Next, we're gonna create a new key and I'm gonna call it Quiver. I'm gonna grab that key. I'm gonna switch back to the .m file again. I'm gonna place it right here and I'll save. Now, if you wanna use Google Authentication, that's when you would need these credentials right here for the cloud project and the applications credentials, but we're not gonna be using that today. We're gonna to use standard login and password. And if you wanted to use a local URL, you would do so right here. You would set private to true, and then you can give the path to your local model. So we're done there. Next, we need to adjust the front end environment variables. So close that. We're gonna open up the front end folder right here. We're gonna go down to the .m file. Now the two environment variables that we need to change are the Superbase URL and the Superbase Anon key. So let's go grab those from Superbase. And so in that same API settings tab right here, it's Anon public. So we're just gonna grab that and we paste it right there. Next, we need the public URL again. So switch back to Superbase. We're gonna copy that URL right there, switch back to our code, and then we input it right there, then hit save. Everything else can stay the same. Next, we have to run this creation script, and this is where it got a little bit confusing, but it should be simple enough once I walk you through it. So there's a little link right here, creation script one. Go ahead and click that, and it opens up this creation script. And essentially what we're doing here is we're gonna feed Superbase a bunch of commands to create the database, the tables that we need, and the columns that we need. So at the top right, we're gonna click this little copy raw button, switch back to Superbase, and then on the left side, there's a SQL editor button. Go ahead and click that. We're gonna go to the top left, new query, new blank query, and then we're just gonna paste in the contents of that script. Then right here, we click run. And if it ran successfully, it'll say success, no rows returned. And that's it. Now we have all the tables we need to run this. All right, the last thing we need to do is get Docker up and running. So to do that, we already have a Docker Compose file. This is probably the easiest part. You just type out Docker Compose dash F, and then you reference the YML file, docker dash compose .yml up dash dash build and then you hit enter and then it should build over a few seconds the first time you run this will definitely take longer than the subsequent times and remember you have to have docker up and running for this to work if you get an error or a docker error it's probably because you don't have docker up and running on your computer okay it's done and we can see right here the url that we're going to access this at is localhost colon 3000 so go ahead and copy that and the server's up and running, it's waiting for our commands. Let's make sure it's working. Switch back to the browser, open up a new tab, localhost 3000, hit enter, and there it is. Now it looks like it's already logging me in because I already have one up and running, but the first thing you'll see is actually a login screen. So I'll log out and I'll show that to you now. So the first time you get this up and running, this is what you're gonna see. And again, this is a pretty full featured application. You can put this on production and have people log in to chat with all of your files privately, publicly, anything you want. Now, if you're signing up for the first time, you can do the login with Google if you filled out that information in the .m file, but since we didn't, this is not gonna work. So what we're gonna do is don't have an account, sign up. And then right here, you put in an email and password and it will actually send you an email to verify. You get that email, you click verify, and then you should be good to go. So I'm gonna sign up with my email address and then click sign up. And then it says confirmation email sent, please check your email, I'm gonna go do that now. Hit enter, and there we go, I'm logged in. So now I can log in with that username and password going forward. And the first thing we're gonna need to do is create a brain. So up here with this little brain icon, we click it, click a new brain, I'm just gonna call it test, and we click plus. And there it created a new brain. Click on that, and it should be good. Now I grab any document, and I drag it right into there, upload. 
And there, now it's chunking it, it's creating an embedding from it, and it's uploading it to the database. All right, there it is, file uploaded successfully. So now I have everything in here, and if I go to the Explore tab, I can see that the document is there. And if I go to the Chat tab, I can now chat with that document. So. What is this document about? There it is. The document you provided is the Constitution of the United States. It works. You can drop anything you want in there. It is so cool. You also can actually verbally chat with your documents with this little button right here. You can actually talk into your mic and ask questions. And then they have the settings button right here. And this is where you can select your model. You can adjust the temperature, adjust the tokens, and a few other options. It also has chat history, which is really nice. And again, probably the coolest thing about this is you can put this on the internet and have it walled behind authorization. So you can give access to your friends, your colleagues to chat with documents that you create. So that's it. I think this is incredible. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.